uh, Marco to introduce me. And thank you, the organizers, for inviting me once more to India. Um, okay, I will talk to this Torelli type theorems for the modulus space of, let me introduce the notation, parabolic fixed bundles. I will explain what it is and introduce all the concepts. Um, also, as a byproduct, we will uh, have a Torelli theorem for the modulus space of parabolic bundles. This is joint work with uh, Indra Nirvishmas. Um, so let's start with what do I mean with Torelli theorem. Um, so a classical Torelli theorem says that uh, if you have a, um, a curve, um, let's say smooth, algebraic, complex, genus G curve, then it is completely determined, determined by its uh, polarized Jacobian. So you have two ones. Then there is a isomorphism. Then you have isomorphism of the course. Okay. So there are a lot of extensions on this kind of theorem. First, to the modular space of vector bundles, uh, stable vector bundles, rank two, a uh, odd degree. Um, here, stability for a bundle means the slope stability. Um, And uh, this was proved by Turing in, in the 69 by uh, for rank two and uh, Munford and Newstead and Newstead prove it for the case where you have rank two and fixed determinant. Um, of course, the degree of the determinant is odd, and Narasimha and Shadi. it for any rank R, uh, co-prime with a degree, um, and fixed determinant. So this is a line bundle over X. OK. So this is the situation for the vector bundles. But what um, uh, the Narasimha uh, Sashadri theorem as um, another way of thinking on these vector bundles, that is as a model space of representations, unitary representations, irreducible, modulo conjugation. Modular space is a uh, homeomorphic to the model, well, diffeomorphic to the modular space of a stable vector bundles, but rank r degree zero. So then, metan Cesare extending it to representations of your algebraic curve, you recall. X was an algebraic curve or a Riemann surface, compact. If you prefer when talking about the representation. Um, so they extended it to irreducible representations. 
Yeah, yeah you, you fix the conjugacy class around the points uh, in X. Uh, didn't tell you what was C, except C. Meaning that, I mean, the standard, the, um, the correspondence for the model space of representations where you take some points on the Riemann surface. So when you fix the conjugacy class, inside the N, and this is isomorphic, diffeomorphic to model space of vector bundles, but with an extra structure which is called parabolic. What does it mean? It means that um, if you have um, your conjugacy class into UN fix, then you can write it, I mean, it diagonalized, so you can write it this way. One, two, I, alpha r, and then this here gives you an splitting, I mean, a flag on your bundle over your point. Which is weighted. Um, I mean, observe that this EI is just EI e plus one, ER, where the E1, E2, E3 are the, just the canonical basis, I mean, for this special uh, way, I mean, when you have this diagonalized. So this is what is called a parabolic structure. Notice that uh, the bundle considered is a bundle over the whole Riemann surface, but with this structure. So we substitute the idea of, of taking out a point by considering the whole holomorphic bundle, but with this special structure there. So in this case, the Torelli theorem was proved by Lagi, Isbas, and Del Baño. Um, for such objects, um, for rank two, let me just use alpha for the whole collection of weights at every point, just to be fast. Uh, and here I'm distinguishing in between the tilde and without the tilde, just uh, use a full flag, meaning that you don't have repeated weights here. Just consider that the, all these steps are of, of, of one dimension, and then uh, uh, this is, uh, you have one, I mean, all of these are different for the alphas. And you can do this without a lot of generalities, so it's a, that's not a problem. So what they prove, um, was for a small weights, and two, and any degree, that there is a Torelli theorem in this case. Okay, so how do you prove a Torelli theorem? In general, what you do is to go to the to a previous one. So uh, let me introduce you again uh, the modular space of fixed bundles. Um, This, let me do it in another way. Um, just consider the modular space of vector bundles. It's tangent space at a point. Uh, is given by H1 of the endomorphism of the bundle. So 
its cotangent, which is a duality, is isomorphic to this thing. So we define as a Higgs bundle then in this cotangent space of the moduli space of, of let's put a let's put an S to remember that this is stable. Um, of the moduli space of the stable vector bundles. So a Higgs bundle is just a pair where you have a bundle together with a Higgs field. If we consider all such things, we need to talk about the stability to do the GAT, corresponding GAT to get the moduli space. And the stability here is uh, the following condition. So the degree of a subbundle in the slope has to be less. The slope of the bundle, but for all, um, instead of for all subbundles, only for that ones that are P invariant or invariant under the Higgs field. So it gives you that you can have an unstable bundle, but it, but which is a stable Higgs bundle. So, I mean, meaning that the, this cotangent sits inside the modular space of Higgs bundles, stable Higgs bundles, right? But it's not everything. I mean, it's an open dense subset of the moduli space of a stable Higgs bundles. Then, um, okay, okay. Uh, then, for the moduli space of Higgs bundles, Indra, Neil, and Tomas. Uh, they prove the theorem for the space of X bundles are stable any rank, any degree. How? They showed on the Higgs integration that Laura told la last week, and they discovered that they could find, given the moduli space as an abstract manifold, they could find the moduli space of vector bundles inside the moduli space of Higgs bundles as a fixed point for the sister action. So I will define the Higgs configuration later for the parabolic Higgs, so don't worry. So, but just to tell you that the combination of these two elements give you uh, how to find inside this abstract manifold the moduli space of vector bundles, then you take uh, a previous Torelli theorem and then you have your, your Torelli for the bigger variety. Uh, okay, so we thought, okay, uh, uh, Thomas and I extended this proof uh, to, to the case of parabolic Higgs bundles, in this, this, the proof was exactly the same. The methods were very similar. I mean, just you have to deal with the parabolic weights and the parabolic points. Um, but then, in this case, check out that the, the situation is rank two and a small weights. So we were forced to rank two and this is small weights. As you can guess, this, this proof didn't, doesn't uh, need to fix the rank. So um, also, another thing is the genus. Here the genus is bigger than two. And here the genus, um, uh -huh. don't remember. 
think it's bigger than two also. What's the thick? I think it's because here. Um, but then we, we, we were like, uh, we want more. Because this rank two was kind of unpleasant. So <laughs> then we joined efforts. Uh, and thank you. Okay. So, and we proved the following. Let me put it here for the rest of the talk. So it's, this was the left eye. Um, so we put the following. You have X minus prime, any genus, your set of points. Ah, I forgot to tell you that you notice that here, when you, rec I mean, when you have the modulus of parabolic bandas, you don't only have to recover your curve, you also have to recover the points. Meaning that if you have an isomorphy, so let me put X. then you have an isomorphism that is sending your mark points to the mark points on the other. So meaning that exactly is the curve with, together with the mark points. So for this set of data and a line bundle, which is a determinant line bundle for the model space of parabolic peaks, There is a C star equivariant isomorphy that's between the modular spaces for the different curves. Ah, such that it, uh, the pullback of the neuron severity form of the line bundle is under this isomorphism gives you the neuron severity over the first one. Then you recover your curve together with a uh, Um, but for this, we had some restrictions, which are the following. Before, we needed the genus to be bigger than two. In this case, we have the following condition. Um, We will see how it comes. So we will see how this happens during the, the proof. We are going to prove. Uh, we'll say that as a byproduct, the collateral damage to this theorem is is a Torelli for the model space of parabolic bundles, uh, meaning that with same kind of data. Um, line bundle over the model spaces, x and x prime. Uh, then um, 
to let just let me write this this way. I mean, omit the the rank degree and the, and the weights. This case is the will be the contrary tend to the usual one that is using a, a previous for the vector bundles and then getting another a, another Torelli for some bigger structure. So we will see why. So if the ingredients here were the C star action and the Hitching fibrillation, it will be the same again. But we are going to use a uh, here in Bayur to this. To this. <laughs> Here in by Jax, uh, that give us a kind of characterization of the interval system that uh, that it's provided by the Higgs bundles. So will be, there will be a surface solving the problem. <laughs> Uh, just tell you what is uh, Jack's theorem about. So I'm, I'm going to just uh, give a very naive explanation of it. Uh, it appeared in a paper in Duke in the 90s. So, um, so it says that for an integrable system, that you have a symplectic manifold that's homomorphic symplectic form mapped to an open set of the complex space um, and H and um, a family. And we suppose that there is a family of cores over these days such that, hence dimension n plus one, um, such that so this is. Um, such that for each curve there, the inverse image for this U here is the Jacobian of this curve. This is the integral system that we are dealing with, which looks like very much to the integral system we were talking about just uh, last week. Planes will be that. Uh, how do you construct this? This is just the Abel map, um, and um, you can. I mean, it, it will depend on on the section that you are using to construct the Abel map. So, the theorem says. Provided that the pullback of the symplectic form on your family of curves satisfies this, then this is coisotropic. And the quotient by the null foliation gives you a complex surface. Moreover, it doesn't depend on the section you're using to define your Abel map. So if you have another Abel map satisfying this, it means that you have the same symplectic form on your uh, family of course. So 
this is what we are going to use. Mm -hmm. So, as an example, uh, Jax himself uh, give, gives the module of two parameters. He shows that, of course, we have the same situation. For the case of fixed bundles. But we are going to extend it, when it's possible to extend it to the parabolic fixed bundles. And I'm going to explain you now. This map, uh, what is this map? This map is the one that takes you your fixed bundle to the characteristic polynomial of the fixed tree. Um, and actually, you again, you have a family of curves satisfying the conditions that we were uh, needing. Um, how? Let's consider um, the projection of the total space of the, instead of the canonical bundle as we have now, the divisor will be the canonical bundle times the divisor over the curve. And then pull back it. Pull back the canonical bundle times the divisor over this total space. And use this, our tautological section. The same we have it uh, last week, was explained by Laura, but without the device. So then, you can construct the, the, this characteristic polynomial. It's, it's this. Do you see it here? Okay. Um, minus the pullback. So this R plus times R minus one is one. So this is your characteristic polynomial. And moreover, uh, uh, S R M sections that are um, of, on, I mean, this should be here, no? I mean, they, they, they that is what I'm going to say. Uh, these sections can go, uh, pull, push forward to X, so they are, maybe it's better for you. Um, that's that. Uh, these are our S sites. Uh, is it possible to see it? Oh. Now you can say, okay, I mean, this was all in the in the I mean, uh, in, in the family of spectral cores. So um, you can say that now for a, an element here of your kitchen base, as used to be named last week, then you can give an equation. This is a curve on your total space of the canonical bundle times the device. This is the way you have it. 
So, okay, so you, we have for a point here, we get, call it the view, vector curve, and uh, thanks to Bovil, Narasimhan, and Ramanan, um, we know that uh, the inverse image of the, uh, by the Hitchin map is uh, is isomorphic to the Jacobian of this spectral curve. This is Bovina uh, Simon and Raman and Pig. Um, we also okay. Let me. I mean, we remember that uh, the theorem by Jax will give us a, um, a surface. So um, let me erase it now. Sorry? Uh, yeah, good question. Mm. Remember that our um, Higgs funders, I erased it, they were here. Um, the Higgs funders that we were choosing uh, did I define? Ah, I didn't define the Higgs bundle for the modular, I mean, for the parabolic case. The parabolic case, what it gives you is uh, something like this. You will have the cotangent of the modular space of parabolic bundles uh, is isomorphic to, sorry, I forgot, uh, this guy. So a parabolic Higgs bundle has your Higgs field belonging to this. What is this S par? S par means that you have a parabolic endomorphism, maybe you prefer endomorphism, uh, means that you're over the point, the Higgs field, uh, it's a triangular matrix, meaning that it is uh, preserving the flag. But when you are taking the strongly parallel endomorphism, then your Higgs field is an impotent matrix. So I was forgetting a very important thing that is uh, your Higgs field um, belongs here. So these are one forms, meromorphic one forms with poles of order one over the points. So then that's the reason because you have your Hitchin base with this Ki, Pi. Why minus one? Because we, I'm considering that over the mark points, these are zeros. So then you have a, a drop here because of that, or a zero. Um, that was your the answer? <laughs> kind of. I mean, this is where you have, I mean, the alphas, um, the, the weights here don't appear, but they are fixed from the beginning. The fixed from the beginning is the way you, it's kind of, it's, it's similar to the degree because the parabolic degree for a, a bundle is the, a combination of the degree plus the sum of the weights. All the weights over all the points, etc. As the degree was uh, determined, a way to determine the, the mobile space. In this case, it's the degree plus the weight. So, okay. Mm -hmm. So we have this uh, interval system uh, satisfying the conditions um, by, uh, for the interval system for uh, Urtubis theorem. And moreover, we were wondering maybe Little detail is that the line bundle uh, that we have for the modular space is such that when restricted to these fibers, gives a, a multiple of the uh, polarization, canonical polarization of this Jacobian. So, it's 
seems that we have a lot of ingredients, but we were saying that the, the, this surface was going, was going to give us uh, the proof. Um, actually, um, uh, Urtubi's theorem needs that, uh, I think I forgot to say, that um, we should consider cores which are smooth. But this is not a problem for the integrable system that we have there, uh, because again in Bobilna's Raman, Ramanan paper, uh, they give a condition that uh, the space here such that this is curve is smooth, uh, equivalent to consider that uh, I mean kind of vertical this bundle uh, doesn't have multiple uh, sections with multiple zeros. I mean, it's very ample. And for this, we, what we need is the degree of the bundle to be okay. to be bigger than 2g plus 1, which is the first condition there. Oh, the second. I explained the already one. Okay. So, how Q solves the problem? Now we use, I mean, we have the, the Hitch integration. Now we need to use the sister action. It happens that if these are the fixed points, the star action. Given by, okay. If you have a sister action on the modular space here, it gives a sister action on your family, of course. How? Uh, well, the sister action on the modular space was like this. Uh, so this provides. Uh, action that was for a curve here to a curve here. That's the action. And this provides a sister action on your family, of course, and it extends to the quotient, gives you a sister action on Q. Okay. Uh, but what happens? that this is exactly the um, zero section of KD. Hence, it is your curve. And it's going fast. Um, moreover, so the sister action on the modular space give us um, the curve as a fixed point set of the action on the family of, of, of course. Um, we need the, also the points. Uh, what is the situation when you have uh, your modular space um, of parabolic Higgs bundles? You have your points, and the situation, then the spectral curve totally ramifies over these over these points. We have seen that this uh, is um, effects. So we can say that the points uh, which are the points in D are exactly those for which all the spectral cores 
Pastor. Okay, so if we have a parabolic model space of parabolic Higgs bundles, it satisfies uh, the conditions for uh, the theorem given by Urtubis. So we get a, um, a complex surface uh, that characterizes the, the integral system. And using the siesta action, we can recover the curve and the points. So how do we prove the, the theorem? How do we prove the, the Torelli theorem? So we start with an abstract variety. We know that it is the modular space, but we don't know neither the, the, I mean, we know that it has a siesta action, but we don't know the Higgs integration because we know the points here, but we don't know how the Higgs fields are. So we cannot do the characteristic polynomial. So what we do is, okay, um, we have something like this, this data. knowing that it should be a moduli space of parabolic x and then we say, okay, so we can consider the space of global functions over this manifold. And if we recall from last week, uh, uh, Richard uh, puntualized that um, the moduli space of, I mean, the Hitchin map was just kind of um, a finization of the space. I mean, the Hitchin map was exactly this, which is the same as since E is an affine space. So then, okay, we can consider just this space. Uh, where the um, um, algebraic, I mean, the spectral curves were smooth. How? Yeah. How we determine the superspace of a smooth view? Well, easily, but just by thinking on these are you such that the Jacobian. Uh, is an abelian variety. I mean, such that we recover the whole abelian variety. Okay, so we have more or less uh, some of the ingredients. Uh, did we miss any? Um, oh, okay, the line bundle here restricts to a line bundle here. Good. Um, and that what we need, we needed, I erase it, but we needed um, um, uh, we needed S, I mean here we have J, we have, we needed something like this, no? But we have here Jacobians. Well, it's nice because we have this line bundle that was giving us a multiple of the polarization of the of the Jacobian here. So using the classic Torelli theorem, so for any of these SUs, together with all L restricted to the fiber, then give us As you here. So now we have the integrable system as we wanted. Um, okay, just we need to use uh, uh, that you this give us Q and this is S, and we know that uh, 
Give us this. Okay, good. Um, so I still have time to tell you from this, how do you get the curves? This is actually, this is a determinant and bundle, but you, you, over the modular space, you never, I mean, you not, you not always have a determinant like bundle, but you can construct it by, on, 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 open subsets and do this in a nice way. So that's how you get this line bundle. Um, okay, so how do you get a, a, a Torelli theorem for the model space of, vec of parabolic vector bundles without fixed field? Um, well, recall that uh, Its cotangent uh, was inside the model space of parabolic Higgs. So, mm, then um, what we need is to kind of is to start with a. Uh, Modular space. Think, think of it as an abstract variety. Think of an to cotangent. If cotangent will have a symplectic structure, we need, uh, and then we almost have kind of uh, a integral system as before, but we need to extend it to the to the case of parabolic fix. So we will think on a line bundle here, again, that we uh, lift the line bundle and we extend there. So what will we do? Some kind of hard box uh, theorem saying that everything will extend if the codimension of this is Bigger than or equal to two. Then, once we have this codimension, then we can think on the modular space of parabolic bundles, and then go to its, its cotangent, extend everything, and use the previous argument, which we previous already. Um, uh, and how do we compute this? We use Morse theory. Um, what does it mean? Again, the sister action restricts to us S1 action, Hamiltonian action on the modular space of Higgs bundles. I mean, giving us a moment map. This moment map happens to be a Morse function, which is also a perfect Then the work of uh, Kirwan I mean, then we know that there are two um, There are two stratifications. Of the modular space. Uh, one is the Bialy-Leakey 
Ursula the certification that uh, is something like that, defining as a key remain point close And here one proves that these uh, are equal to the most certification. Uh, that is, uh, call it To, to use the, uh, the, the your Morse function to, to, go, to do the flow, I mean, limit of the flow, going to a fixed point set. Um, and then the codimension, I mean, and, the, uh, and then the codimension here, of this, sorry, before the combination, let me just show you that this space, minus the tangent, is just a guide such that E is unstable. It is the same as the space of the guys such that do not convert uh, to the space, to the modular space of parabolic bundles. I mean, when your Higgs is zero, uh, um, I'm writing the only, ah, okay. This is this. Okay, sorry. I mean, you can say that the, the cotangent is exactly the ones that uh, uh, is stable. So the ones that in the limit they go to a stable bundle, stable parabolic bundle. But then the cotangent, call it uh, um, the cotangent and uh, the codimension of the modular space minus this cotangent. Uh, can be then compute using a uh, Morse theory. I mean, the dimension of this space is given by the by the Morse index. So, using the Morse index here, compute the co-space. Um, then you have that the co-dimension is this one half of n minus one. So that has to be together. This gives us some condition here for this space for this theorem that is never be uh, one half minus one zero minus one and that's it. Yeah, exactly. Uh, actually, it's the same. If you see the the the, the, the divisor doesn't appear there. It's, it's it's funny because when when you do this, it's, it's just you are computing the the degree of this strongly parabolic uh, endomorphism of 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 the bundle, and it happens that they cancel. So 
It's a funny thing that it doesn't depend on the number of points, the disco dimension. <laughs>